Military members and their families are facing unique challenges during the pandemic as they deal with social isolation and distance from support networks. Joining me today is retired Marine Captain Donnie O'Malley to talk about this really important issue. Captain, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for having me. Glad to be on. Of course. So everyone, right, is dealing with some level of stress because of this. And when you couple the issues that come with being a veteran and being with a, a, a military family, how is how are they dealing with this? Our military community is, in general, dealing with it by connecting digitally. And what we've seen is a, a huge uptick in engagement in Facebook groups online. Uh, Facebook groups have been connecting military members and little sub communities within the military. Uh, they've been connecting us together for, for years now, but the usage is significantly higher. And that's a really positive thing because veterans need social connection uh, in order to maintain good mental health. It's important to us. So in those connections, what are some of the issues that you discuss? I'm sure part of it is the fear of contracting the virus, uh, what do you uh, actually deal with in those conversations, in those digital conversations? A lot of it is just um, intended to, to talk about anything. It doesn't have, we don't, we don't always talk about Corona. In fact, I try to get people to stop talking about Corona. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we talk about uh, all of our loved ones, about the things that we want to do when this thing ends. Uh, we talk about activities that we can that we haven't thought of yet that we can come up with to connect both now and in the future. And a lot of what we do is connect through laughter. Laughter is this somewhat universal connector uh, amongst military members, both active and veteran, because humor is, is what we used to both connect and to cope with the military experience in general. Starting from boot camp, going to to watching people die or having friends kill themselves. Um, laughter is how we cope with this stuff. And that laughter is being used to cope with the social isolation, to cope with the fear of COVID. There's a, there's a, there's a greater fear of death that exists now. And uh, laughter is how we cope with the fear of death. You know, to a civilian, what would you say is really some of the difficult parts of being a veteran and then particularly in something like this? In general, there is this expectation. Uh, uh, there's an image that the civilian public uh, has of veterans. And that image is, is generally created by recruiting posters and recruiting commercials and by some movies. There's this image of the United States veteran, of this perfect and flawless, honorable person. And uh, that's not the case for a lot of veterans. And so part of what's difficult going from military service to the civilian world is knowing that all of these people have this expectation of me that is not me. Mm. And that's difficult. And that makes veterans isolate themselves. It makes them not even want to engage in um, the civilian population. So if I were to give a call to action or make a recommendation to civilians on how to help improve veteran mental health, I would say for one, don't approach us or think of us um, as a stereotype or with an image that has been created by uh, media, by posters, by, by marketing. Don't assume that we are that image. Instead, just ask questions and approach us with a clean slate and seek to understand why we are the way we are, do the things that we do, laugh at the things that we laugh at, and I think approaching us with an intent to understand the curiosity instead of the judgment, instead of a preconceived notion, uh, that I think that will go a long way to improving veteran mental health because we won't feel so socially outcasted when we enter the civilian world. And that's a big step. I also want to get your opinions on uh, the current active troops. There's been some stories recently about those in the military community being concerned that the military isn't following social distancing guidelines and isn't doing enough to protect them. What are you hearing among your friends and people that are still serving? Um, what I'm hearing is that they are, that they're, it's for the most part, business as usual, which, I mean, the military exists to 
defend the nation. So I don't think that can stop. But um, I think some of the measures that are, are put in place are not always followed uh, based on what I've been told. You know, they're, they're told to do something, but then 10 minutes later, they're, it's not being uh, upheld. So, it, I mean, it sounds like typical military, typical government bureaucracy. All these policies coming down and nothing's being followed to the T. And so respect gets lost for the policy. Um, but I, I mean, this is, I, I don't think they need to stop doing what they're doing because, um, are, are, are enemies stopping? I don't know, but if we stop and our enemies continue training, that's a problem. So I think yeah. there's some degree of business of usual is necessary to keep a fighting force ready to defend the nation. Wow. I could talk to you forever about this. I think it's such an interesting topic and you have such great insight. So thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course.